Welcome to Life Study of the Bible, brought to you by Living Stream Ministry. In 1924, Witness Lee was dynamically saved by the Lord as a young man in his native China, and he promptly consecrated the rest of his life to the gospel. He co-labored with Watchman Nee for parts of the next three decades, and in 1962, Witness Lee was led by the Lord to come to the United States. During his 35 years of service to the Lord in America, he ministered in weekly meetings and weekend conferences, delivering thousands of spoken messages. Much of his speaking has since been published as more than 400 titles, many of which have been translated into numerous foreign languages. He gave his last public conference in February 1997 at the age of 91. We're happy today to be able to bring you recorded excerpts from his speaking and encourage you to contact us if you have any further questions or comments. Please send email to radio at lsm.org. Now, let's join today's program. The Bible is a book of Christ. If we have eyes to see, we can see him not only in every book of the Bible, but really on every page of the Bible. Revelation, the final book, shows us Christ in so many aspects that we dare not overlook anything if we desire to know him as he is presented to us in his holy word. Francis Paul has joined us today. And we're getting a wonderful view of our Lord Jesus in the first chapter of this book that is called The Testimony of Jesus Christ. Welcome back to the program, Francis. Well, it's always good to be here, and especially getting into this book of Revelation. I think this is marvelously opening up our eyes to see what this book is about. Yeah, it really is. It uh, came up, I think, in either the first or second program. It's not a book about frogs and uh, serpents and scorpions and things such as that. It's really the revelation of this marvelous person, Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's our focus. The first chapter, Francis, presents us with eight crucial points. We've been looking at these points the last uh, week and a half or so, at least the first seven of them. Today we come to the last one, and that is Christ as the Son of Man. Yesterday's program on the significance of the seven lampstands I thought was tremendous. Very few people have ever gotten into the depths of this type or this sign, the lampstands. Maybe you could review this for us a little bit before we go on today. Well, getting into this book and uh, seeing right at the beginning of it this picture of the lampstands and realizing that this is a book of signs, we realize this sign of the lampstands is very significant and is not new in coming to us in the Bible. Matter of fact, in the Bible, the lampstand is always related to God's building. The first time it was mentioned was in Exodus chapter 25. And there it's related to the building of the tabernacle. Or when the tabernacle was built, right. the lampstand was mentioned. And then the second instance was in the building of the temple in First Kings. And then the third has very much to do with the rebuilding of God's temple in Zechariah. So we follow this line throughout the Scriptures. We can see very clearly that here in Revelation, also the lampstands mentioned here are related to the building up of the churches. So I believe this gives us a very good picture of the expression of God through the churches as are depicted by the lampstands here. Always related to the building of his purpose, isn't it? Yes, that's in right. These, in these various stages as it progresses through the revelation of the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. So it's a very critical, important item. Today, as we come to this uh, next point, it's interesting to see that these lampstands, again, are directly related to where we're going today. Let me read a couple of verses, and I think you'll see where I'm going here. In verse 12, it says, And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment reaching to the feet, and girded about at the breasts with a golden girdle. And his head and his hair were as white as white wool, as snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. This Son of Man, Francis, we see him here in Revelation, is in the midst of these golden lampstands. So the picture is all connected uh, as we touch these marvelous signs that John pointed us to, uh, showing us really this wonderful person. Let's join Witness Lee with this first portion today. We uh, need to see the Son of Man in the midst of the church is in his humanity. Two funny thoughts. 
among Christians. Many so-called Christians through the centuries argued that Christ was not the Son of God. Even today, some so-called Christians do not believe that Christ is the Son of God. This is something heretical. This is something from the Hades, no doubt, to say that Jesus Christ is not the Son of God, but merely a man. This is devilish, satanic. We don't agree with this at all. We stand against it. But if you check, if you would spend some time to be with the so-called fundamental Christians, a number of them do not believe that Christ today is still the Son of Man. They thought Christ became a man by incarnation, but... He dropped humanity by his resurrection. After he resurrected from the dead, he got away from humanity. Today, some of the Christians, so-called fundamental Christians, thought Christ is merely the Son of God, nothing to do with humanity. In the past years, about 15 years ago, I did fight against this matter, because some rose up and opposed me, saying that to see Christ today is still the Son of Man, is a heresy. So don't listen to so many voices. Even some of the fundamental Christians, they don't believe that Christ today is the Son of Man. But we believe. According to the pure word, the Lord Jesus today is both the Son of God and the Son of Man. He is the Son of Man as well as the Son of God. How to explain this? We have no ability to do it because we are so limited. Yet, we do believe and we do accept that our Christ is both the Son of God and the Son of Man. He is the Son of God with divinity, and He is the Son of Man with humanity. In Him, you have the genuine divinity, and in Him, you have the proper humanity. Francis, when the Lord Jesus was incarnated as a genuine man, It's somewhat easy to see him in that context as the Son of Man. But today, in his resurrection, it becomes more difficult, especially, I think, for our natural mind to comprehend just how his humanity can still be involved in God's economy. From the Bible, Francis, what's our basis for believing so strongly that today Christ is still the Son of God and the Son of Man? Well, the the whole Bible. (laughs) It's hard to say... uh, you limit it down to a few verses. It's not too hard to find the verses. Right. We have to know that he's the son of God. Right. If we don't believe that he is the son of God, as he told the Jews, if you don't believe that I am, which is the name for God, mm-hmm. you'll die in your sins. So certainly we believe he's the son of God. Right. And I believe uh, our listeners in large would certainly not have any problem with the fact that he's the son of God. Of course, scripturally, we know that he was born of Mary so that when he came forth, he was both God and man. If we don't see him as man, we miss God's economy. If we really see this point, that he is both God and man, we wouldn't realize what God's purpose is more clearly. But the Bible tells us again and again, in different stages of our experiences, how he is the Son of Man. In uh, 1 Timothy, it mentions... Uh, There's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. So if he put off being a man, there's no way for him to be our mediator. And also, he's presented in Hebrews chapter 7 as, as our high priest. The whole passage there links him with the priest that existed in the Old Testament. But it still shows that he ever lives 
to be our high priest. And for him to be a priest and a mediator, we have to know that he is not only divine, but also human. For him to take care of us, he is human as well as divine. But our problem many times is we think of human just in the physical makeup of a human being. Right. But humanity is much more than just having a physical body, as uh, Revelation chapter 1 tells us, and uh, many other passages that indicate that he still is the Son of Man. That's how Stephen saw him in Acts chapter 7. He said, I saw Jesus standing. Jesus is his human name. So when you uh, refer to Jesus, you have to realize that he is Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. So he's the Son of Man, he is the commissioned one by God, and he is the Son of God. So uh, I hope that uh, we could really get this clear, that he is both divine and human. He is both God and man. And as such, he's able to be everything to us. Well, as we've seen, uh, a big topic, I don't want to open uh, an unduly large one at this at this point in time. We want to get back to the message. But in this ministry, many times we are uh, presented the reality that in his incarnation, he brought his divinity into humanity. Right. And in his resurrection and ascension, he brought his humanity into divinity. These are uh, marvelous pearls in God's word, aren't they, Francis? Yes, they are. And they're really crucial to our understanding God's economy. You mentioned, uh, referring to Hebrews chapter 7, that, of course, in resurrection, in ascension, in the heavens today, we have a great high priest, the man Christ Jesus. Verse 13 touches this matter a little bit, and that's where we're going in this next section. Let me read this verse again. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment reaching to the feet, and girded about at the breasts with a golden girdle. In addition to seeing him revealed as the genuine Son of Man, this verse also indicates indirectly that he is our high priest, the one caring for us, his people. Let's go back to Witness Lee. Suppose there is a man among us with a kind of uniform of the uh, policeman. We all recognize he is here as a policeman. The uniform indicates. Look at him here. He is clothed with a garment or a robe reaching to the feet. This is the priestly robe, the priestly garment. No doubt this indicates today the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, walking in the midst of the churches is a priest. We all have to know he is our priest. He's not here as our king. He's not here as our Lord. He's not here as our Savior. He is here as our priest. Telling the truth among the three offices, the priest, the prophet, and the king, the most intimate one, the most dear one, the most precious one, and the most lovely one is the priest. Priest is the mostly loved one. Why? Because the priest takes care of the people. Here Christ, walking among the churches, takes care of the churches. His girdle is not on the loin, but on the breast. I don't think you have ever seen such a view someone with the uh, uh, girdle, not on the loin, but on the breast. Have you ever girdled yourself in this way? Suppose that our Jesus is walking here in the long priestly garment, yet he put his girdle upon the breast and not upon his loin. What would you think about him? I tell you, this is quite meaningful. This indicates what? This indicates his work has been finished. His work is over. Here, the girdle is on the breast. The work of Christ for the church is over. But now, he takes a divine care of the church. 
He is caring for the church, and this girdle is divine. He takes a divine care for the church. Now, Francis, I like his、uh, way of couching these these three different titles that we see. Of course, a king is very good. A prophet is also very good, but neither of these is so intimate as the priest, the one who is really caring for us. We've heard from so many listeners, Francis, and they remark about how often this ministry opens up such riches from a subtle point or a point that has typically been overlooked. I think this word about being girded about the breast is、uh, such a point, don't you? It's a very sweet point, isn't it? Yeah, and it's、uh, something to see, realize that.、Uh To be girded、uh, means to be、uh, strengthened、mm-hmm. and to be supported. For his work, he was girded, and this was a golden girdle, and he was able to carry out his work for the churches. But in his caring for the churches, now it's pictured. He's pictured here as having his breast girded, and this is the picture of his loving care, and it's also、uh, his divine care. Because it's a golden girdle, it shows that it's a, the divine care he has for the churches, and I feel like this is a very sweet portion in this book to see how the Lord, as the High Priest, so girded, is caring for His people, caring for the church. If Francis, this matter of the breast always indicates something of the loving care that Christ has for His people. So to see our priest in this way is is really a, a tender view, an intimate view, as we heard, isn't it? Yes, that's that's the marvel of this, because we're prone to think of Christ just in the work that He does. Right. But He's、uh, now, as the High Priest over all the churches, is just supplying, caring for us, His people, in such a a strengthened way by the divine life. So it's a golden girdle around the breast that really give us a picture that's so marvelously been presented to us today. Well, there's another aspect of Christ as the priest that appears in this passage in verse 14. It says, "And his head and hair were white as white wool, as snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire." This side of our great high priest, we want to see in this final section today. So let's go back to Witness Lee. He is now as a priest working among the churches, caring the churches. By what way? By being a priest to treat all the lambs. Hallelujah!、Amen. He is watching, observing, searching, judging by enlightening and infusing. His eyes are watching. His eyes are observing, searching, judging by enlightening, and eventually infusing. Infusing us with all what he is, and these infusing eyes are as a flame of fire, burning all the time. Take me to experiences. Don't exercise your mind to understand these kind of things. When you read, you have to go back to experience. You could see my. After the day you got saved, Christ's eyes has been always like the burning fire. It's gold. Let me tell you, the burning eyes not only enlightens you, but also infuses you, and also what stir you up to be hot after being looked at. By the eyes of Christ, you could never be so cold as you were. This is why many, many times we got burned. We become so、uh, so hot. Why? Because something looking at us, and that looking burns us, tears us up in the Lord. Well, Francis, people's eyes reveal a lot. Christ, our High Priest, the one who is caring for us in this chapter, Revelation one, has eyes like a flame of fire. I think all believers,、uh, as he just pointed out, after we're saved, we have some sensation at least. We may not have a clear doctrinal understanding, but we do have an experiential sensation of these flaming eyes, don't we? 
<laughs> we surely do. Uh, I don't think there's anyone who has received the Lord in a genuine way who hasn't had a sense of the Lord looking at them. This experience needs to be brought into our day-by-day realization that the Lord is looking at us. Uh, in Revelation, it is a book on judgment, and there's a lot goes on in the looking, because the seven eyes means that uh, his look has been really intensified when you get to Revelation. He's not just looking. Sometimes people just look, and, you, and there's just love shining out. But sometimes there is real uh, exposure, mm-hmm. uh, something really exposing what we're like and what we're what we're doing, or some attitude that we're we're having. And suddenly the Lord just looks at you. This is not physical, of course, but it's very real. And this is His way, mainly, as Brother Lee pointed out, it's mainly to infuse Himself into us. I've had the experiences of uh, maybe having some kind of uh, crossword or some kind of uh, unhappiness with someone, and then suddenly feel the Lord just looking right through me. And I just am exposed. I'm judged, but not it doesn't stop at that. He infuses himself in all of his care, all of his tenderness, and all of his enlightening with himself. So we are we're really under, under the eyes of the Lord. There's more than once in the in the whole Bible when people say, "You God see me." <laughs> you know, Francis, this matter of infusing here, uh, I think this is a key point. Uh, we have oh about a minute left. Let's let's stay on this for just a bit. I think the exposing uh, of these flaming eyes is easy for us to relate to, but the infusing is a bit more uh, intangible, I guess. Um, how, what is it for His element to be infused into us? It means that God Himself in Christ now is uh, imparting what He is in His divine nature into us. You know, in Second Peter it mentions we're partakers of the divine nature. This is how we're partaking of the divine nature, by His infusing Himself. He does it with the Word. He does it many times with touching our conscience. He does it many times with just enlightening us. But the Lord's way and His purpose, His goal, is to infuse His very life and nature into us. So we will be the real partakers of the divine nature and the divine life. I think I'll leave our listeners with another verse. Uh, We won't mention it today. I'll just give you the reference and encourage you to look it up. It's very much along this line. It struck me as you were uh, talking about Peter, partaking of the divine nature. But 2 Corinthians 3.18 also, I think, fits well into the context of what we're talking about experiencing something from the Lord's look uh, beyond just the exposing, which we surely need. Francis, I enjoyed our time together as always. It went very quickly today, so uh, we'll come back and do this again. I hope so. We uh, invite you back as well. Tomorrow we'll return with another life study from the book of Revelation. Before we go, I'll point out our toll-free number and invite you to call us. It is 1-888-LIFE-STUDY. That's 888-543-3788. Our mailing address, Living Stream Ministry, Post Office Box 2121, Anaheim, California, 92814. And our email address, radio at lsm.org. Please join us again tomorrow. We'll be back, as I said, another life study from the life study of Revelation. And for Francis Ball today, I'm Chris Wilde. Thank you very much for listening. You've been listening to Life Study of the Bible with Witness Lee, brought to you by Living Stream Ministry. Whether you're hearing this program via radio, online, or as a podcast, you'll find hundreds of audio studies just like this one by visiting our website, lsmradio.com. We also hope you'll email us with your questions or comments, radio at lsm.org, or call us toll-free, one life study That's 888-543-3788. Thanks for listening.